Hey guys, so it turns out that there's actually very few things you need from trig in physics, which is awesome news. Um, but you need to be a ninja at them, at these things, because they're going to show up all the time, right? So first I'm going to show you some unusual cases or uses of the Pythagorean's theorem and Sokotoa. And the reason I say unusual is because most of the time you're going to be able to use your four vector equations to solve these problems. Every now and then you're going to get some weird thing at, thrown at you and you're going to have to, you might have to use these guys. So before I start, I want to point out that every triangle in physics would be a right triangle. Um, so this is 90 degrees here. And you're going to have, all triangles have four um, variables the three sides and the angle. Now, there's an angle here, but it doesn't count because if you know this angle, you know that angle as well. So these are the four main variables. And as long as you have two of them, you can find the other two using a combination of Pythagorean theorem and Sokotoa. Okay? So here, I'm giving you of A equals 5, AX equals 4, and we're looking for AY, and we're looking for theta. The easiest way to do this is to realize that I have two sides, so I can find the third side using Pythagorean's theorem. Whenever you have two sides, you can find the third one, whichever combination of two you have works. Um, once you do that, you can then find theta. Now, that being said, you can actually find theta without finding AY first. As long as you know any two sides, you can find theta using Sogatoa. Okay? So if you wanted to do that, um, just to show you um, this particular case, because you're not going to use it very often. Um, here you have, this is your opposite, um, this is your adjacent, and this is your hypotenuse. And you have your adjacent and your hypotenuse. So if you go here, adjacent, hypotenuse, it's cosine. CAH means that the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, but you don't want the cosine of theta, you want theta, so theta is the arc cosine of the adjacent, which is 4, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. You plug this into your calculator, you get your lovely answer. But I don't actually want to go that route. I just wanted to show you that real quick. I want to find AY first using Pythagorean's theorem. It's the easiest way to do it, that's probably what you should do. Um, A squared plus B squared equals... C squared, so AX squared plus AY squared, these are the components, equals the whole vector, right? Let's plug in the numbers here. 4 squared, AY is what we're looking for. So I'm going to do this. And this guy here, A is 5 squared. I'm going to move the 4 over here, it becomes a negative. So I get AY squared equals 25 minus 4 squared, 16. This is a 9. So AY is just the square root of 9, which is 3. So AY equals 3. Cool. Now I can find the angle. And now I have all three sides. So I can pick whichever one of these three I want. So Ka or Toa. I'm going to pick Toa just because that's the one we usually use. So it's good practice. Um, and Toa says that the tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. But I want theta. So theta is the arc tangent of opposite, which is, now we know it's a 3, over the adjacent, which is a 4. And if you do this carefully in your calculator, you get a 37 degrees. So that's this right here, 37 degrees. I'm going to highlight the answers in green, um, 3 and 37. Now let's look at this other one, a little unusual here. I got the angle up there. Usually, this is a 30. Usually, we're going to want the angle to be against the x-axis. This angle here is against the y-axis. This would have been against the x-axis. We want the angle here. Typically what you would do is move this angle and make it a 16. Just get rid of this guy and use 60 instead. But let's force ourselves to use that angle to practice um, Sokotoa and Pythagorean theorem. So what else do I know? I know that AY equals 8 and I'm looking for AX and I'm looking for A. Now, you actually cannot use Pythagorean's theorem here because you only have one side. You don't have both sides. So you're going to have to use Sokotoa, right? You have the angle, you have the, this is the adjacent side that you have, but you don't have the opposite side or hypotenuse. 
So just pick who you want to, uh, which one you want to solve for first. Do you want to solve for the opposite, or do you want to solve for the hypotenuse? You want to basically get out of this lock that you're in. I'm going to solve for the opposite angle first. That's just arbitrary decision. Um, but if you look here, opposite is here and adjacent is here. So tangent is going to be the angle that I'm going to the the toa part of Soka toa that I'm going to use. So it says that tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. Now, usually what you do with this is you take the arc tangent to find theta. But now I actually have theta, and I'm looking for something else. So this is going to be the tangent of theta of 30 rather, sorry, um, equals opposite, which is what I'm looking for divided by adjacent which is 8. So this 8 can multiply and come back come up here and I'm going to get 8 tangent of, the, of 30 is the length of my opposite side and if I do this I get that my opposite side which is AX equals uh, put this in the calculator get 4.62 okay so this is 4.62 now I have two sides I can find the third one using Pythagorean theorem. theorem. AX squared, AY squared equals A squared. AX is 4.62. AY is 8. And if I take the square root of all this and I plug it in the calculator, I get 9.24. Okay. So let's keep going. Now I want to show you a bunch of other small quick things here. Um, this first piece, you already know this. Uh, vector composition. If I'm moving this way, I have an AX and I move up. This is an AY. I can use these two guys to find my A and my theta. And the way that works is the magnitude of A is given by the square root of A squared plus AX squared plus AY squared. This is Pythagorean theorem. And this angle here is given by the arc tangent of AY over AX, right? Now, the flip side of that is I could give you an A, the, the vector, the length of the vector, and the angle, and ask you what are the components of that, um, which are these two guys, and then we're going to find AX and AY. And the way to do that is AX equals A cosine of theta, and AY equals A sine of theta. Remember, we want x to go with cosine. We want the angle to be against the x-axis. So you absolutely need to know those four equations. You're going to use them all the time, right? So next thing here, unit circle. Remember this guy from trig, probably not good memories. But um, zero is right here on the unit circle, right? It's the positive x-axis. And the unit circle goes like this. This is the positive direction of the unit circle, counterclockwise. Uh, I should have made that red, but whatever. Um, this is the blue is going to be the negative direction, which is clockwise. So one way to remember this um, is that the clock is backwards from the unit circle or, or vice versa. Okay, um, quadrants. We grow this way starting from zero here. So this is first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. You should know that this is the positive y-axis, negative y-axis. Um, positive x-axis, negative x-axis. And one consequence of that is if I have a vector sort of going this way and I want to decompose, let's call this a force F, and I want to decompose this force, this is my Fx right here, right? So flat against the x-axis and then this is my Fy flat against the y-axis. Fy is positive because it's going up and Fx is negative because it's going to the left. And remember that going up is positive, going to the right is positive. This is the um, convention for vectors. Okay, angles and triangles, complementary angles. I already talked about this briefly earlier. Um, if this is 60, then this over here is 30. You want to use the blue angle, not the red angle, right? We'll talk more about this later. If that is a 60, then this over here will be a 60 as well. So notice that this guy is between the, this angle is between the vector and the x-axis. This angle is between the vector and the x-axis as well. And this guy is with the y-axis, so this guy with the y-axis over here is 30 as well. If I make a triangle out of this, I can make a triangle this way or this way. 
uh, and that actually forms a rectangle. But if I do that, then if this is 60, then this is 30 over here. This is with the y-axis. This is with the y-axis. They're both 30. So you, you need to know these kinds of things um, and how they work. Um, and then the last thing is I want to talk about angles using north, south, west, and east. And let me put it here. North is this way. South is this way. West is this way. East is this way. Um, and how do we do this? 30 degrees north of east. You might see that. Well, the strategy I use is to start with east, the second word, and go back to the first word. Let me show you what I mean. East is to the right, so I'm going to go east. And then I'm going to pull towards north. So I'm here, and I'm going to pull towards north, and this is my angle. Okay? So I'm going to pull towards north from east. This is my angle right there. That's the 30 degrees that I'm talking about. Okay? Now let's do this one real quick. South of west. Again, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to start going south, and then I'm going to pull towards west. So I started, at, um, I started south, ugh, and I'm going to go west like that. So it's going to look like this. Um, theta equals 30. Cool. And that's it. Now there's eight variations of these. It's kind of annoying. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities, which are all the combinations of you know north of east and east of south and all kinds of different ones. Um, and you can know how to get that. So the next thing I want to talk about is when you take the arc tangent of a function, you have to be very careful. There's a few rules to remember. Um, and you're going to do this when you're putting together a vector. Remember, theta equals the arc tangent of y over x. Okay, so you're going to use this a lot. The arc tangent function, you need to know, always gives you an angle in either the first or fourth quadrants. Okay, first or fourth quadrant. This is first, this is fourth. Even if your vector is somewhere over this way, um, the calculator is always going to give you an angle that is relative to the x-axis, either above or below the x-axis, right? If your vector happens to be in the second or third quadrant, um, you're going to have to do the adjusting yourself. You're going to have, and to do that, you can just add or subtract 180. The reason I say add, subtract, you pick, is because it doesn't matter if you add or subtract 180, you end up in the same place. For example, if I'm here at 10 degrees, and I add 180, add 180, I end up at, so if I add 180, I end up at 190. But if instead you subtract 180 from here, you end up at negative 170. And guess what? Those two numbers are the same. both end up in that thick blue line, okay? So, all right, let's do a problem. For each of, uh, for each set of vectors, find the absolute angle of the vectors. So AX equals four, AY equals negative three. So AX equals four, looks like this. AY equals three, looks like this. You could have drawn it, you could have gone Y first x after it would have given you the same thing in fact it would have looked like this a y a x you still end up having the same arrow doesn't matter um, and this is your a vector right here those are the legs of that vector um, now remember the angle that you want from the starting position here is against the x-axis. So you want the angle against the x-axis. You don't want this angle. This is the angle with the y. You want, that's bad. You want this angle right here. That is your theta. Okay? Um, actually, we want the absolute angle. So it's either going to be the total angle going this way or the angle going this way. Sorry about that. So, But definitely not this guy, right? So let's see if we can figure this out. Um, I have the two legs, so I can just say that theta is the arc tangent of AY over AX. AY, we plug in with the signs. AY is negative 3, AX is 4. And I'm going to get a negative 37. OK? 
Okay, negative 37. Um, this angle is in the fourth quadrant, which is okay. That's a good quadrant for the arctangent function. So you don't have to make any adjustments. Negative 37 is the correct answer. Um, if you want to make this a positive angle, you can just add 360, but you don't have to, right? You could add 360 if you want, but you don't have to. Um, absolute just means that it's relative to zero, right? It's coming from zero in either direction. So that's the right answer. Um, let's do the next one. So here, AX is negative four. So I'm gonna go negative four to the left, or four to the left. And A AY is three. Um, so it goes up like that. So your vector, A vector looks like this. And typically, you would want this angle here, right? But in this situation, I actually want the absolute angle which is going to be this angle right here, from zero, from the positive x-axis, zero degrees, okay? So I'm gonna call this angle theta absolute. Here, by the way, the theta absolute was the same as the theta that we got in the diagram, okay? Cool, so the first thing I'm gonna do is find this theta right here, um, and then make the adjustment. So Theta is the arctangent of y over x, ay over ax. So it's the arctangent of ay3, ax negative 4. And if you plug this in, whoop, let me disappear. Um, if you plug this in, you're going to get 30, negative 37 degrees. Negative 37 degrees. Now, you are on the second quadrant, which is bad. You need to adjust. And to adjust, you're going to have to add or subtract 180 degrees to find the correct angle. So from this, from negative 37, I'm going to add, I'm going to add 180 degrees. And I'm going to get one 37, no, 157, 157, 147, 143, 1, should have done this earlier, 143. Cool, um, and that is the correct angle, right? That's the absolute angle. Now, that should make sense, because if you even count this slowly here, you would get that this is 90. This 37 is this angle here, except that it's positive. So this other guy here needs to be 53. So 90 plus 53, that's the other way of doing it, but it's a little bit more work um, and more thinking, is 143. Or you can just know that whenever you're in the second quadrant or the third quadrant, you can just add or subtract 180 to get the actual absolute angle that you're supposed to have. All right? So that's it for this one.